Thunder, 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 Thunder. Oh! What are you looking at, nerd? Huh? Nerds, nerds, nerds. <laughs> I am Frederick Philip Von Weiss. Thank you so much for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do tech good. And this is our last episode of season five, I think, uh, the year 2020. So thanks, everybody, for joining us on this uh, last episode of this season. Uh, go ahead and start asking your questions, and we'll answer them in the order that they received. Uh, additionally, if you have not yet, please go to YouTube dot com slash thunder nerds and subscribe it's a uh, i'll put the screen up so you could see it uh if i could find it oh guess i don't have there oh there it is <laughs> so again youtube.com slash thunder nerds go ahead and subscribe to the show lastly uh before we get started i want to thank our sponsor we have a unique sponsor that we've had all year, which is Auth0. They make it easy for developers to build a custom, secure, and standard-based unified login by providing authentication and authorization as a service. So check them out at Auth0.com. Really would appreciate that. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get to our amazing guest today. Uh, we have from the city of Tampa, formerly Orlando, Full stack developer, tech educator, and speaker, Vincent Tang. Welcome to the show, Vincent. Thank you for having me on the show today. I'm really excited to be on here. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. Uh, I say we uh, in, in the plural sense, obviously, uh, but uh, Brian and uh, uh, Sarah aren't here today. Brian had a family thing, and so does Sarah. So, yeah, welcome to the show. Um, Vincent, I, I want to ask you a little bit about who you are, what you do, all that, and then we'll dive into some of that. Um, first, mm -hmm. let me ask you, uh, why, why why the move from Orlando to Tampa? Orlando is a pretty happening place itself. Why why the Tampas? So I actually lived in Orlando almost my entire life. I grew up there, although I, I was actually born in a whole different country, but Orlando is is pretty much where I've been. <laughs> Orlando is where I've been born and raised since I was three years old. And um, I kind of wanted something new. I wanted to live somewhere else. I didn't want to live next to family. So closest thing out there city-wise was Tampa. So once I started going to software development, started transitioning um, from the company that I previously worked at in Orlando, I decided to venture off to another city. So just wanted to still see my friends back home, but just be far enough that I don't see family all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's not that far of a drive. Like, what is it, like a, an hour, I think, from Tampa, if you're lucky? Like it depends on, um, like, what part of Orlando you're talking about and what part of Tampa you're talking about. So, for me, I live in Ybor yeah. City, which is literally, like, oh. I could see the highway right outside my window, actually. I, I mean, yeah. You can actually see it on my screen. You can see the cars rolling by <laughs> on, on the right side. Like that's the, that's the view like outside my apartment right here. And going to Orlando, like uh, I live close. My parents live close to, to Disney World, so that's about an hour and twenty minutes. So it's actually not that bad. Oh, that's cool. I'm sure too. There's so many different um, things that are the same and yet are different about from Orlando to Tampa because Tampa is there. It's just a plethora of, of things to do. I, I mm -hmm. spent a lot of, a lot of my uh, youth uh, romping about um, uh, downtown Ebor, uh, the castle, big up to the castle. I love the castle. Oh, um, oh wait, yeah. oh, really? You've lived, you've lived down here. It's awesome. Actually the castle oh, yeah, is still yeah. closed right now. It's yeah, actually, it's, right now. it's gonna open, I think in Halloween. The castle is this unique downtown nightclub. It's like a one of a kind, it's hard to describe. It's, it's very gothy. It's a, it's a goth. It's a goth dance club, basically. And <laughs> That's it, yeah. Funny story, I accidentally ran into my boss there one time. <laughs> oh, no. Your boss isn't the senator, is he? <laughs> and he said, don't, so, don't tell anyone at work that I saw that we saw each other. And we just kept it at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I can only imagine the outfit. So, like, he had, like, the super, like, like dark, dark, long no, he, hair he, he, that was greased up with the eyeliner. He was dressed in business formal. He didn't... <laughs> It didn't really fit it. We'll see, but it was funny. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, I, like I said, I went to a ton of clubs there. I used to play out a, a lot in some of the clubs in Ebor. 
Um, and it, it was, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Great, great, great town. So, yeah, you know, well, welcome to the city. Um, let me ask you, uh, we'll dive in a little bit of your, your 2020. Obviously, we've been talking mm -hmm. to everybody about their um, 2020 experience, how they've been coping with COVID, how they've been staying productive, which I want to get to. But mm -hmm. first, I'd really like to dive into, excuse the pun, some of the things that's been happening to you in 2020. Uh, first off, you, you, you've been diving recently and you had like kind of a life change by getting the bends, yeah. which I didn't really think was a thing. I thought that was something I saw in GI Joe once. And I was like, Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's a real thing. Like, do you mind going into that? Yeah. So I got certified in scuba dive. It's something or I got certified um, as a open water diver around July. And it's something that I've wanted to do my entire life. I just never had the time or uh, or just the location to actually learn how to properly scuba dive. Sure. So once I got certified, um, and this was about a month ago, I went on a practice dive off the coast of Clearwater. And it was supposed to be like, just, just like a dive to get more familiar with how to dive off a charter boat, jumping off a boat, going to the ocean. Like I've done dives um, in, in Crystal Springs and also Rainbow River. So just like more as part of my training, mm -hmm. but uh, get, like, just a lot of things went wrong that day, basically. So I used new rental gear for the first time. I was supposed to dive with the dive master that day and things kind of went awry. Um, I didn't realize how much seasickness would affect me when I got actually to the site itself. And, and I had actually, actually ended up vomiting at the, at the boat right before I went on the dive and things didn't really play out that well. But anyways, all things being said, I had gotten my gear like all suited up, right? Right. And I wasn't entirely familiar with how it worked because it's been a while since I've, since I've had scuba dive, since I've done a dive, it has been like two months before that. And I ended up pulling the emergency drop weight strap, which is not what you're supposed to pull before you get into the water. Cause you have to test like whether you're buoyant or not when you're actually in the water oh. to make sure you can sink. So mm -hmm. I got in the water and like, I realized that, you know, I had to go back in the boat and get readjusted and refixed. By the time I got back to, got back in the water and, and, and I was trying to look for my dive partner because you always dive in pairs. He was nowhere to be found. The dive master was nowhere to be found either. I just assumed they were going to be at the bottom rendezvous point when, you, when you're when you like on the boat and it's anchored and you go to the very bottom that people would be there and then would have single communication by hand to like kind of indicate like where we're going. But no one was there either. So I ended up solo diving that day, which is not something what you're supposed to do as an unsupervised and experienced diver, which which is what I am right now. And, uh, you know, the dive went well in the beginning, but then when I started ascending, um, I went through like an amateur mistake where I've inflated my life vest and it's not something you're supposed to do. You're supposed to actually kick up to the surface, but I inflated it just as a rookie mistake. And my, I just kept like going straight up to the surface. Like I just actually started accelerating from 50 feet down to the bottom floor, all the way to zero feet. And I just going, kept going faster and faster and faster. And that's actually one of the most, God. that's actually one of the most dangerous things you can do in scuba diving because, yeah. uh, and actually people die from that. Uh, so what happens is the best way to describe it is if you have like a, imagine this was a soda bottle, right? Just, just, this water bottle right here. Imagine this, this thing is a, is a, is a soda bottle, right? And you shake it up, right? And when you shake it up, um, you know, there's, there's like buildup and if you pop it off right away, there's going to be fizzy bubbles coming out, right? Well, the analogy here is that bottle is your body and the water inside is your organs. So you're essentially exploding on yourself is the best way to describe it. You're getting internal barotrauma and that's what I suffered. And it's not immediately Jeez. obvious what the symptoms are, but you get damage to your central nervous system. I started having like tingling sensation in my arms the first day. And I called like the 911 diver alert network line, which is like, you know, so like the, the, the line you call in case you actually have problems. And I told them all my symptoms and it was minor enough that they kind of wrote it off. I was fine for the first two days. The third day, like everything just went really awful. And like I was, I went to Publix to go get groceries after like going for a morning swim and like I almost passed out and wow. went to the ER. Um, they did all sorts of different tests, blood tests, EKG tests to measure my heart level, um, blood pressure, whatever, and, and x-rays. And they couldn't find anything particularly like concerning about me, even though I told them what I had. And I didn't realize that on my skin, and this was in hindsight, I should have told them, but I had like scab marks randomly throughout my body where the 
were essentially like the the bubbles from the from from rising up too quickly would would appear. So basically, um, the actual the actual scientific principle of what happens when you ascend from you know like below surface level to the surface level is there is a gas law called Boyle's law, which says if pressure times volume is equal to pressure times volume, because you're coming from a low or you're coming from a high pressure area to a low pressure area, the volume inside your body actually goes up. So basically you have like inert gas in your in your whole like body as you're underwater, like excess nitrogen that doesn't dissipate right away. And then that those molecules expand and that damages everything. So you're just you're just you're just internally exploding. This space 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 space. Let let's let's fast forward a little bit. How are you doing now? Are you okay? Or you, you got to wait a little bit? Or you don't know what the situation is? I actually fully recovered. Um, so it's nice. been about okay. four weeks. Uh, the so just to get back on the 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 third day um, when I went to the ER, mm -hmm. I ended up getting discharged from the ER worse than when I came in. <laughs> and they could not see anything wrong with me. I started losing the ability to walk that day. I literally had to like brace myself against the wall to like hold myself steady. And when I went to sleep that night, I was kind of scared to be very frank. I thought I was gonna be paralyzed the next day, wake up and go, oh damn, I can't use my legs anymore. Wow. <laughs> like, it was that bad because I already, I just got discharged from the hospital and things got worse and I can't go to the hospital again because I already just saw a doctor, right? Yeah. And it, it was it was scary. And then like the next day, I couldn't walk for a little bit for the next day. And then the next day afterward, it got a little better. And then I was feeling a little bit like better as things progressed. But yeah, I literally lost the ability to walk that day. Like when it's I crazy because mo mo most people I would think uh, believe that the worst thing that could happen if you were diving would be you know you, you get attacked by a shark or a, a oh, sea monster. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying most people would think that's mm -hmm. that's like the worst scenario. You know, obviously most people don't go scuba diving, so you know, you have these little things in your head. But you know, the bends, geez, buddy, that's awful. I'm so sorry to hear it. We we had some yeah. people in, in the in the chat, the the comments just wanted to say, like, you know, hey, uh wow, you really did have the bends and uh and, oh, and, here's uh, on there. Hey Javier, yeah, how's it yeah. going? Yeah, he said, Hey everyone. I haven't yeah. seen Javier in forever. He's from Orlando too. We used to go to tech meetups all the time. Javier's oh, awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Well, thanks for nice watching. Nice you too, buddy. Another thing which you selectively, and, and I'm going to guess that you you did uh, uh, prior to having <laughs> why would you be in the hospital, again, would be you had a uh, deviated septum surgery. And and here's here's the fine shot. <laughs> <laughs> right I actually head. had the same thing done when I was a kid. I think it was my last year of high school. I, I kind of remember that. But like, yeah, uh, for me, like I, I couldn't breathe and I, I didn't realize that people could actually breathe through their nose. Um, yeah, so crazy. I elected to get it done. And I, I guess you have the same experience, right? Yeah. So growing up, um, I've always noticed that I've had something wrong with me in terms of just like how I carry out myself throughout the day. Like sometimes like I look back at like videos of myself as like a kid or just 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 younger years, and sometimes I picture that my cousins send me pictures of people that look like me that they find in the wild, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm just like looking at those description, looking at that picture. It's like this is what my family and my cousin and then my friends think of me. Like this is what I look like. It's usually like some guy's hunched over like this. It's like mouth gape open like that. Cave man. <laughs> and like and like okay, that's that's that's. That's pretty inaccurate. That's an actually apt description to me, <laughs> from like a from like a bystander standpoint. And <laughs> and for the longest time, it's like, why do I do this? Like, and I tried to like like practice like breathing through my nose and stop like having my mouth open like wide open in public, just just out of just pure habit. And it didn't occur to me that I just had breathing problems. Like I can't breathe through my nose. Like every time someone tells you like, or at least during like a yoga exercise, like take a deep breath and like they inhale through their nostril. <laughs> Like that, I'm just like I can't do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, would that be nice? Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. Like, like I have the same thing where people are like, oh, you breathe out of your mouth a lot, and like you know, I didn't really think about it. I just that that's how you breathe, and then oh, you can actually get a thing and you can breathe out your nose. I, I was I was fantasy. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was fascinated. I was like, well, okay, yeah, sign me up. Let's go. And like you know, for me, like I, I went under anesthesia next day in a few days, just kind of mm -hmm. like what we, we talked about offline here is, is that, you know, 
within a month, you're all good. It's amazing uh, how, how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surgery's so great. I had the surgery planned before the whole scuba diving incident. And then, like, I got injured. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to recover from this injury anyways. Why not just recover from surgery at the same time? <laughs> so I ended up just doubling up on it. And um, like you said, like the anesthesia process, it's it's where you not where they knock you out. They just inject a uh, I don't even know what it is. They don't, like when asked the anesthesia, they, they, um, they ask them like, "What's the science behind anesthesia?" And they're like, "I'm pretty really sure it's just it's Ovaltine, and it just knocks you right out." It's like we don't really understand. We just know that if we inject you with this much stuff, you get knocked out for a couple hours. I'm mm -hmm. like, "Okay, that's reassuring." And then they started telling me a joke, and I started laughing. And then by the next thing you know, I just passed You're out. You're waking up. And yeah. I wake up, my friend Katie's already there picking me up, like, why are you here already? It's only been like five minutes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <No>. oh, <laughs> oh, it's done already. <laughs> That's why you're here. Yeah, and it's amazing remember, how that works. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Like, I didn't even feel a thing. And, like, I didn't even realize it was done. And, like, and then I just see, like, bandages on my nose. Like, okay, now it's done. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't talk. And I remember just being super woozy. It's almost like you, like, it's almost like you've just gotten really high or something like that, or if you just like you just woke up and, and it was like that feeling. I couldn't talk straight and I was like having a hard time like for our Abby audio listeners. Abby is awesome. <laughs> yeah. He, he wrote, Look at you living a dangerous life, Mr. Adventurer Maker. Mr. Adventure Maker. Hobby is awesome. We used to we used, we used we used to compete in hackathons together, and we actually like worked on a, like a, a startup together too. Oh, yeah. So we have we have a we have a good history together. But we met okay. originally from from Orlando tech meetups before COVID was a thing. Before I moved out to Tampa, but yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Like seeing all my friends there, and like, and I haven't seen them in a long time either. Just like I've been living inside my apartment and just living out my days in COVID. But yeah, man, but, it's 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 been rough. But surgery side, like the recovery process, like after I had the surgery, um, it kind of, I still couldn't breathe through my nose at all to recovery. <laughs> That's so true. I just got both of them at the same time. It's all one. It's instead of having two recoveries and two separate times, just have one recovery. Yeah. You took care of all that. Way to go. Took care of all of that. Because I knew I was going to be out of it for a while. So I just got out of it all at the same time. Plus I had, you know. A lot of blood drain for me for different blood tests so that also affected my stanima and i remember i just couldn't do much for the last three four weeks i just been watching a lot of tv and watching a lot of movies and actually i was on medical leave for three weeks as well so i didn't i actually didn't code for three weeks that was a weird yeah. experience yeah let, let's keep you at home for a little bit just be <laughs> safe i'm just saying just you know just, just like a two two weeks just a quarantine you from uh, any kind of risk of uh, surgery uh, again uh, in the near future. So why don't we why don't we actually talk about since you were talking about uh, being at home and coding and what you do. So um, I'd like to know if you could tell us a little bit about what exactly you do. There's there's a few things we discussed, what a, what 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 all that means and uh, what your what your everyday look like. Yeah, so I'm currently a full stack developer at a local web agency in town called E2 Generations. Uh, so what we do is we build startup applications for different companies that need to build startups. Um, we actually work with a financial investment firm that also funds those startups. So it kind of just works full circle. I work on the financial or the financial investment app that we're currently building out, mm -hmm. which is basically a way to connect startups to investors. So, mm -hmm. So essentially startups need funding, investors want to invest in startups and they might want to invest in various types of startups, right? Like a fund yeah. and they want to see the progress of how those startups have been improving over time, as well as like analytics on rate of returns. So that's, that's what I mostly work on right now. It's financial tech. Nice. And okay. It's all, it's all, <laughs> yep. Go ahead. It's all, it's, it's all built in angular and C sharp. So it's a whole different language stack than I'm, not entirely familiar with. I've been working on it for the last hmm. nine months, and we've been just doing different production releases. Where do you yeah. uh, normally like to live besides, uh, I guess, Angular? Are you more of a React or Vue guy? So when I first started uh, coding, or when mm -hmm. I first start, when I first started my first official software development job, I was actually working for a family before this, actually um, doing doing kitchen design for a living, and I started writing my own plugins 
an Excel VBA that I use for work. And that's how I got into program to begin with. And hmm. I was writing plugins for a company called Airtable. I don't know if you ever heard of them. It's like, it's like Excel and steroids. Anyways, um, I ended up transitioning away from that, uh, going through hackathons, doing like little tech meetup talks in the time at Javier. And I ended up transitioning to a place that designed water theme parks. So it was kind of like related in the same industry. And I actually, the first framework that I used officially was Vue. Mm. And then once, once I transitioned from that, I started like, I, I still knew how to use React. And then I transitioned to a, to, to the place I currently work at. And I did a one or two React projects for two different companies. And then I'm working on an Angular project right now. So technically I've done production work for all three frameworks. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so you, you let, let me just go into this a little bit. So you started off in kitchen design, and when mm -hmm. you say kitchen kitchen design, you're talking about you were the guy in the doing like the back end stuff in Excel, right? You're you are are you actually the person that was like, oh, let's you know, let's put this over here, let's put that over there, like in in CAD or something like that. So, so the best way to describe it, a client uh -huh. would come up to me and say, I've got this really great idea. I have this I have this really brilliant food truck concept idea where I want to combine like Chipotle, but make it a VME style Chipotle. What sort of equipment do I need? What's the layout? Yes, schematic? And I would have to walk them through the process. Like, hey, are you using char grilled meat? What 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 things are you cooking? Do you need a fryer? Do you need two fryers? Are you to separate um, like 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 animal greasy lately in foods versus just like foods like vegetable like fried vegetables or whatever? So I would go through that whole consult consultation process to figure out like what their menu is like and like how much space they need and like what what how many people they're expecting to roll in, right? So I would like figured all those things out and it's just something you just do by experience, but there are some benchmarks that you can use. And I'll take those benchmarks and um, do like a CAD diagram, like an architectural blueprint layout. So it'll just be a piece of paper and yeah. it'll have like all the schematics, like in the kitchen, you, you need like a deep fryer here, a char girdle here that's like 15 inches. Then you're gonna need like, um, like a two-door refrigerator and a two-door freezer for like how you're gonna be moving inventory in and out throughout the day. So I kind of like managed the the workflow thought process of like how the kitchen should be designed in, in such a way that that's also, also optimal. So, and then I also have to figure out like how those laws or how the, how that a kitchen equipment line would also fit against like the permits and laws that you'd have for, for sanitation and for, for other applications. And so I'll make the whole blueprint and then I'll send off the permit and then I'll arrange like the equipment to actually be delivered to the site or sometimes wow. get custom modified and actually like do CAD modeling. If they need something really custom and work with the manufacturer, then get it shipped over to our warehouse or directly to the site. And then sometimes I do the delivery myself and then manage some of the construction crew or something. It, it kind of varied a lot, but um, I ended up like designing like a few dozen restaurants in Orlando and actually some in Tampa too. Wow. So it that that's kind of like, the career I had before development. And it was actually a really fun and interesting career yeah. because it's not something you see every day. And like, I could, I could walk in any, like any restaurant, I can like see like all the kitchen equipment manufacturers. And like, I just know like all the representatives that work there, or I just know like a lot more information about like, like this manufacturer has like a specific type of compressor model versus this one, or this one has like a three year parts and labor warranty and a five year compressor warranty. It's just like, it's 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 an interesting field. It's kind of like combining car salesmanship with, with, I don't even know how to describe it, like car salesmanship plus like architectural design. That's that's like, it's a hybrid industry. It doesn't really fit in a specific category. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because it kind of sounds to me like you're um, you know not only the business person and or marketing person but you're also like a like the ux ui designer of like uh, k kitchens there's so much into it so you had this really interesting career it sounds like a fun career mm -hmm. what what made you go you know what i want to you know i know you told us about the thing with excel and making the plugins and all that but what made you take that leap as far as like you know what, i'm going to take this a step further and get into uh development uh, uh, JavaScript. That's where I'm going to go. This is this is what I like. What 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 made that connection for you? So it it was a career that I kind of been doing for the last five or six years of my life, and I wanted to change and try something new. And 
I started getting like really obsessed with like productivity management and it's something that I've always just had an obsession over. And so I would write my own tools and plugins for popular software solutions that are out there. Um, Airtable is one of them. There's a couple other ones that you might not have heard of. And I'd write my own Chrome extensions because basically I would ask the developer, hey, can you like, build up this new feature for something that I use every day? And then it's like, no, sorry, we have to prioritize all of these other features that are more important because <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people are requesting this. I'm like, but I really want this one. And it's like, why don't you just build it yourself? I'm like, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Why don't I just build it myself? And I just ended up building myself and had some, uh, like a guy from like Poland teach me how to use JavaScript. And I was doing like cross script injection and writing my own like JavaScript widgets on top of the page. I'm like, wow, this is actually useful. And then I had like a couple of people download them like, and they're using it every day too. I'm like, wow, it's like, this is actually really fun. And by the time you know, it's like I started writing like all these plugins, like open source plugins that I put on GitHub, and like I had like, like, one time like a thousand people use like the specific plugin that I wrote, and I'm like, this is actually really enjoyable. Like I can make a career doing this, and like I start getting the dopamine rush, like having satisfaction of like building something for myself, and like someone else actually being able to take that and use it for themselves too. So that's how I got started into programming, and then at that point, I'm just, I decided to like fully transition from. Um, from kitchen designer over to like to actual programmer. And I figured, well, since I'm already sort of a designer in, in a sense, right? I'm already like a designer in a sense. Yeah. Um, I already have design skills. I know how to use Adobe products. I know how to do Photoshop and illustration, whatever. I figured I should probably become a front end developer. So I ended up um, looking up different job roles and like deciding to, to specialize in, in like JavaScript and React and whatever. And started going through tutorials on free code camp and after i did that i started going to tech meetups when i felt more comfortable and started doing lightning talks and presentations and then i met javier who's also is also a dev now too and i started like learning to help different different um different developers in the community and like learning from them and like we all just kind of collaborated together uh in, in, the, in that environment and kind of all learned together in that sense so Orlando was like a really good environment for me to to start my career. At least, it's yeah, it, 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 it's interesting because you talk about things like uh, like you're talking about with Javier, how you guys met and uh, you know you became friends, and you know you, you that's the great thing about having friends that do what you do because you feed off each other, and you're like, hey, you know, look at this, look at this, and you, you know you compare stuff. It's pretty cool, and you you grow, but also things like. Um, you, meetups and hackathons which you actually i believe you you speak about too right mm -hmm. I, I talked about i think i did a topic on level up with hackathons at tampa bar camp i think about like when i first moved here and so one of the ways that i want i wanted to get a lot of experience like really early on to get my feet wet at least uh, on different frameworks and, and building different projects but I, you know, have never worked in a team before and I was kind of coming from like a, a perspective where I've never gone to boot camp, and I've never like had like a professional computer or I didn't have a computer science degree. So I still had to have like some way to show a potential employer that I knew what I was talking about. And I still have to like learn like how Git worked and like how all these things work, not to work with the team. So I decided just, you know, go hard in on hackathons because at the end of the day, like you have, you know, two or three days to build out a product and either build it or you don't. And you kind of learn with that short iteration and with every succession, it's like, oh, this is how you actually build something in a short amount of time. Sometimes you just write really ugly code that looks good on the front end, but is absolutely <laughs> awful on the back end. And sometimes we just MVP. make it. <laughs> it's MVP. <laughs> and I just did that and like, I wrote a lot of like really, really like one-off projects. Like one time we built like this, uh, Probably my favorite hackathons that we've worked on so far, or that I've worked on with some other teammates. Um, and actually, one of my good friends from Orlando, we're actually starting like a podcast together. Um, him and I have competed in a number of different hackathons. We did one called Tad Hacks, which is actually this weekend, but I have a friend's birthday party to go to, so I can't do that. And basically, um, all the all the big teleconference. Uh, companies out there kind of get together and they like make their APIs open to the public. So imagine like Twilio, um, but but other competitors of Twilio. So Twilio is like a, a, a service for sending SMS messages to text if you just hit like an endpoint or something like that. So I was like 
using using those API services, and we built a a speed dating app actually in using um, Node.js in Firebase. Nice. Yeah, that was fun. Did, like, did it work? Or are you still lonely? <laughs> <laughs> Well, right now I'm not dating right now just because I'm still recovering and trying to go back to the gym, but, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I like how the gym has, has to connect to this, but you know, it, that that's a fair point. I mean, you lost like over 40 pounds. Uh, I, I believe it sounds like a new year's resolution kind of a thing you did all of a sudden. Yeah. So that that, was another, that's cool. That was Good for you. Um, in January, I was already like on an upward hill of like just gaining too much weight just because I started a new job. I lived, in, I started a new job in a new city and you know, like when you start a new a new job in any new city, like your coworkers or uh, your coworkers just want you to try out all the new food in the area, right? And you know, yeah. you're trying to meet new people, and you're going to these meetups and 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 meeting and network events and events and whatever, and you're just eating junk food all the time. <laughs> That's pretty much what I did, like for the first four or five months when I was in Tampa. I just literally just wanted to try out different places, and I started gaining weight, and I was still going to the gym, but I was at like a hundred and like ninety two pounds, which which was a little high for me just because like I started, I couldn't put on my pants on every day <laughs> and I got to the point. It's like, okay, well I should probably drop some weight. And this was before COVID hit. So um, decided to, to look into different ways of, of dropping weight, like correctly in, in a fitness standpoint. So started doing calorie counting, started to look at um, different diet plans like keto and started just trying them out and see what worked for me. I think what I did is I just made a bunch of protein smoothies and just ate a bunch of fried food and just ate lesser quantities of it. And I was still satiated in full. And that's how I just tried to drop weight over time. So I lost about a pound or, or two pounds a week, which is like the safe limit of what you should do. And I lost 35 pounds in the course of six months. And then in those six months, um, like I, I was able to like run my, like, like run farther distances than, than I had in a long time. So, I was in really good shape then. And then I started like going back and bulking up and trying to get back like the muscle, the muscle, like the muscles that I lost during that weight loss pr process. So, yeah, it takes time. Yeah. So between July to like September was like a weight gaining phase and I gained like 15 pounds, like intentionally. But then I had like the incident from, from scuba diving. Then it's just set all my progress back. So I'm like starting fresh again. But yeah, I've yeah. Going to the gym lately, though. You sorry, what? I've been going to the gym lately, though. I'm like oh. pretty close to fully recovered now, which is good. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm personally, I'm staying away from anything like that. I'm trying to, you know, uh, keep myself and my family safe by, uh, uh, you know, socially social distancing as much as I can, just in case. But yeah, I I really like to get back to the gym as uh, soon as possible. Um, one of the things that you uh, you kind of briefly touched on, if if we could shift gears a moment is uh, you are start, starting a new podcast with your friend, I believe, Herman. What's Herman's last name? Gamboa. Yeah, that's, yeah. You, spelled, you pronounced it right, actually. Um, so most people pronounce it wrong. I, I've been pronouncing really? it How wrong. Do you pro really? Oh, uh, I pronounce it German, and I've been pronouncing his name wrong literally the entire time we've known each other. Oh, and, that's awesome. For, well, how long? <laughs> and literally for about a year. And when we were, when we were doing our intro soundbite, which you could – you could definitely check it out. I'm like, how do you how do you spell your how do you pronounce your name? I've heard, I've heard like a German. Like, do you prefer Herman or German? And and then I had to send like those sound clips over to like the intro, the guy who was making like the intro, because he actually has to know how to pronounce the correct version yeah. of his name. Important. And that's what I, but I still call him German though, even though it's <laughs> German word. to you. That's all. I'm just so used to calling him German though, so I just leave leave it at that. So, so like, um, this was around the time when COVID started. Um, we kind of like had this great idea of just starting a podcast just because uh, if you hard refresh the page, by the way, it's that one's like, a well, that's, that's not actually the, uh, the, the page that's, oh, that's, that's a, a screenshot, screenshot. but let, let's tell everybody where to go. So it's, it's codechefs.dev. Yep. It's codechefs.dev. So yeah. it's, it's a podcast that we've been working on for actually for about six months, just because we've had a lot of things come up in our lives, COVID hit and German recently became a father. So we were just like on and off for the longest time. So really like we've been like working on it for about three months, like actually work on it three months. But um, so, so basically the gist of it is 
we want a way to give back to the community to kind of like share the experiences the experiences that we've learned as developers um the experience that we've learned as developers to other other communities at large uh so when i first started learning how to program i actually would listen to a lot of different podcasts to kind of get a better insight of how things work in the actual software development world not just like in tutorials not just on paper or whatever but like how what people do yeah, yeah what people do like the actual design process thinking how to actually think like a programmer and so I'd listen to these podcasts and it will just be like two senior developers going at it, at it with each other. Um, and I would just like pick up a little things here and there when I was like on my, on my way to work. And that, that experience has definitely helped me grow as a developer. So I want to share, you know, that same experience to people that are also starting from like the beginning, like where they don't have any experience that. and they want a better insight of like how to think programmatically about choosing different frameworks and like the pros and cons of it. And I also want to just uh, kind of uh, kind of like reflect back on like my journey so far and, and the same with German as well, kind of reflect back on the journey as far as things we've learned and like think mistakes we've made and like things we've, we've learned from different jo uh, jobs and like places like things we learned from like different hackathons and just like push the boundary and limits of you know what things we can learn and what things are out there so it's a way it's 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 kind of like a medium for us to like learn together if that makes sense because me and jeremy are kind of like best buddies when it comes to coding yeah totally i mean a, a lot of podcasts that that's that's the heart of it it's it's about learning something and then being able to uh contribute back to our community and what what i love let me let me read this because obviously code chefs and you have the theme going on here and if if you haven't heard the uh the intro yet everybody got to tune in and take a listen to the show um, it's a podcast for hungry web developers code chef is a podcast for developers seeking to learn more about web development whether you're fresh out of boot camp graduate, which I think you should have put fresh out of the oven because, uh, you know, the whole team. <laughs> let me write that down. <laughs> there you we've, go. We've been trying to come up with so many different funds in the show. <laughs> it's, it's so easy. It's, 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 it's great. Fresh or out of the a, into the frying pan. <laughs> exactly. A full stack uh, veteran. Uh, we do a, a range of topics for all levels as developers who love learning we hope you enjoy the content here. And I, I'd like to touch on this episode that you just did because now, now that we're discussing this, this is uh, kind of relevant. You did your preview episode, which is about what the show is, but your first episode is um, uh, your first developer job, which I think a, a lot of people have a, a hard time um, hooking that, that first job. Like, you, you know, you, you go to one of these... Uh, code cams, or you know, you watch a bunch of videos. You know, I just I just watched a bunch of West Boss videos the other day, for example. But like you, you, you get into the space, and you're like, okay, where do I actually go? Am I going to freelance? Do I put up a website? Do I put up a page? You know, and the old Git. Like, what what do I do? Like, so if, if you could describe to us, like, you know, what your and Herman, I'm going to use Herman, Herman's. Um, uh, examples are what your real life scenarios were and uh, how you kind of transition into a, uh, a full-time job doing what you do. So I'll cover a German story. So German used to be a restaurant chain manager for Zaxby's and he had been doing that for the last, I don't know, like four or five years. I can't remember actually how long he's been doing it. And he actually started writing like tools and scripts for like automating things at work which is like really awesome too and he started to like get his hands dirty like uh making like wordpress sites for different clients and that's kind of how he got to start for me it was kind of the same process where we kind of like started programming out of necessity like programming to make our lives easier for me i was working on different plugins for different tools i use for work and personal life mm -hmm. um, whether it was for note taking or just data storage or whatever and that's kind of like how that progression occurred so we started becoming developers first um just just as a as a necessity and then we started appreciating like all the different things they could do with coding all the fun different things all the different hackathons you could build all the different apps you can work on so that's kind of like how that progression occurred and we both come from the restaurant industry i don't really come necessarily from like the restaurant restaurant industry side but more like the construction side Whereas like German actually comes from the restaurant side as a general manager. So we both are still in the same industry. And that's where the name coach just kind of came about is we're both coders that come from 
the, sh- the restaurant industry, like coach chefs, chefs that work in a restaurant. And my family also, my family, it, I come from a family of chefs too. So that also- oh, that's cool. I assume you know how to cook then. I know how to cook as well. I'm not nearly as good of a cook as my brother or my mom. My mom used to be a, a chef at Disney. Um, like wow. Back, so it, it just runs in my family. And like my, my aunt is also used to run a restaurant. So figured to give homage to, to like, to like my, my previous history my family history and everything. It figured just have a combination of words that would match that description with the way I'm going right now, the career I'm going with right now. So we decided on Code Chess. We decided on like a bunch of other names and we just made a spreadsheet. It's like, which one sounds good and which one's available as a domain? <laughs> so yeah. Code, Chess, Code Chess was already taken from someone else from like an institute of, I don't even know what it is. It's like some learning institute, but Code Chess Dev is technically our Twitter handle. That's what we use for everything. So that's kind of what we decided on. And we had to do I'm- a lot of stuff to get there. I, I love that name. Just, uh, just not only just like it's it's about the background that you both came from from a different industry because you know we have so many second, third, fourth degree um, uh, techs that that came a, a different career and now they're they're doing this like they're trying this out and they found their niche and what they love. I I could totally see this uh, being applicable to a lot of other people with uh, any industry that someone comes from walk life having like you know theme it like this i just love it i think it's so authentic and uh and real and and fun yeah we definitely want to do something different so when we decided on coach chess we're just like well if we're doing the restaurant industry there's so many different puns we can make and we decided to to rethink it rethink how podcasts should be done or at least like rethink the process how you can approach creating a podcast episode so we decided to emulate our episodes based off the dining experience at a restaurant. So imagine you walk into a restaurant, you have a seat in the waiter. Oh, that's so cool. And then they take your order, they go to the back of the kitchen, the, your food's ready and they serve it to you, then you eat. And then you have dessert and then you leave, right? So how that translates analogously to the episode is the beginning intro soundbite is basically like, you've already ordered the item off the menu and it's getting you're sitting down at the table and it's about to be served to you and then when the episode starts you're eating the episode basically in a sense right and then you're consuming it you're consuming it you're consuming knowledge you're learning you're you're with yeah. their right and then at the very end we have something called dessert time which is just basically a way for us to have like a mini blog session where we talk about anything we want german talks a lot about fatherhood i talk about a lot of different hobbies and mr adventure maker stuff that that hobby makes one of for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but like you wrote in the comments, don't forget about the uh, handstand that you could do. Oh, uh, I don't know if I could do that still. <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm not strong enough to do. No, it. no, no. I'm I'm not going to ask you to do that right now. Obviously, <laughs> with the bends, uh, see previous ten minutes ago. No, you're not going to do that tonight on the show. But yeah, I, I love the whole format of this and everything you're telling me about it. Like I I I think it's great. I think it's a really cool show. Um, speaking about that first episode again, uh, not to keep going back to this, but I, the last point I'd really like you to provide is for people right now that are looking to, uh, again, be that second, third, fourth career dev, they're trying to get into the industry. What advice do you give people? Like, where do you tell them to go? Like, uh, watch this, listen to that, do this and six months, etc. I don't think there's like a hard path for anyone to take since everyone kind of comes from a different walk of life and everyone definitely like has a different level of like skill starting out so some people come from like a design background and maybe have worked in agencies so they might be familiar with like the process of how software development works like for me i came from like a place where i like invested a lot into like using different startup software applications so i kind of got early on into like how software development cycles work as a consumer um but if I were to give advice to my past self or just anyone like like wanting to transition from like a second or third or fourth career dev, um, I would definitely start uh, going to tech meetups. That definitely helps a lot, especially because you start getting like you can start getting your hands on your, your hands reached with a lot of different like topics they've never heard before. So like I've gone to like yeah. I used to go to like a tech meetup like almost every day in Orlando, and like there was a joke running around town that there's a tech meetup it's it's probably there so and like sometimes like i have i would have no idea what they're talking about for an hour like one time i went to like this 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 talk on like 
PowerShell and Windows management. And then I came out of it and I'm like, what did I learn for the last hour and a half? I don't even know what, what that even was. So <laughs> there are times like that. And like, you just have to like kind of push through it and realize that you're not going to fully comprehend everything out there. But if you just absorb a lot of information starting out, you start familiarizing yourself with like a lot of different concepts and you start seeing yeah. patterns emerging. Another thing that I recommend, so like the first one was like go to tech meetups. The second one is to go into different like Slack channels. So within every city in the U.S., there's um, within every major city in the U.S., there's like different Slack channels across the country. So for Tampa, there's uh, Suncoast Developers, Slack, um, Orlando has Orlando Devs. New York has like five or six different Slack channels. Denver has a really, really great um, Slack channel as well. And you just go to the one that that's closest to you. And, and that, that's also like, that's also, uh, that's also uh, active. Like one of my friends, actually, he used to be a, a former prisoner. Um, oh, he yeah. Started, and he actually started a Slack channel for uh, people that are just coming out of, out of, out of, out of, uh, out of prison. And so that's a whole different, like a whole different, a whole different Slack channel for a specific type of group. But just join like a, a channel that can definitely help you motivate you to push yourself to the limits. Um, for me, when I started learning, I started going on free code camp forums and started asking a lot of questions. I went on Reddit a lot. Then I went to Orlando devs. So definitely. So the first thing is like for, this, for the second thing is definitely find a community that can push you to your limits. Um, and there's, you know, lots of different Slack channels out there. Yeah. Definitely put those in the show notes. There's GitHub list for those as well. And the third thing I'd recommend, um, besides tutorials, since, you know, everyone's going to say tutorials, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Or, or camp, cause you know, not everyone can afford boot camp. It can be kind of expensive. Um, the third we one can I'm certainly gonna, go to YouTube right away. I mean, that's free. That, that's what I did. So yeah. I did YouTube and Udemy because sometimes YouTube has the content you need, but sometimes Udemy just has it all formatted because people are the content creators are paid for it. So they kind of spend yeah. a little more time and energy to make sure it actually, actually, you know, covers everything that you should know. So the third thing I would recommend is hackathons since, um, hackathons, it, yeah, it is kind of weird right now just because of COVID. And there's actually a hackathon literally this weekend, which is a really good one I recommend called Tat Hacks. What am I when I used to go to when I used to go to hackathons, um, I used to compete with another one of my friends, Win Tosser. He is actually the number one MLH hacker in the world. Like what? major hacker. Yeah. <laughs> like uh so for 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 the collegiate level, you could take there's certain hackathons you can compete in depending on if you're in the college level or if you're a professional, professional or just anybody else. Uh, in the college level, he's actually the number one in, in that uh -huh. sector. And like people, when he goes to hackathons, like people actually recognize him. It's like, aren't you that guy? You're Vince Oster, aren't you? <laughs> and and he, gets, he gets a lot of pressure. Sometimes he's like, Vincent, can you help me like build this thing out? Cause they have high expectations of me. <laughs> so, so he actually, he actually asked me to do tad hacks this weekend, but I couldn't go because I'm friend's birthday. But um, definitely hackathons. Hackathons are definitely a great way to learn. We've I've competed in about like ten or twelve of them. Like I've done like gaming hackathons, I've done healthcare hackathons, teleconference hackathons, like literally like the whole spectrum. Like we've competed in one that was like literally fifty grand prize pool, but we didn't get anything out of it. We actually drove all the way from Orlando all the way to Jerdu, Missouri, which is like right outside Tampa. Yeah. And we drive, dude. We actually when Tosser actually brought like a whole like hardware set. Like he had like Geiger sensors for like radiation tracking and like Arduinos and motors and whatever. What we built actually out of there was like this it's, it might sound kind of crude, but we built a uh, a pill dispensing system and it's I can send you a link to it. Basically please do imagine this, this might be a really crude analogy, but imagine like a, a automatic dog food dispenser, like in case, in case you have a pet and they're hungry and you're not there to, to you're out of town or whatever. It yeah. just automatically sets this food at a certain time of day. And it just like, it's like containers here, there's a rotating dial and then food just drops out. Right. We did the same concept, but for elderly patients and for pills. So like keeping track of like, if you have a loved one that needs to, and you need to keep track of whether you're taking a medication on time, you'd have a dispensing mm -hmm. system and it'll just dispense at a certain time of day. And we have like a, a camera that recognize like whether that person's the correct person, like getting their pills. So like, it was just a way for you to track your loved ones taking medication. 
in a way wow, that that's was, really interesting yeah so we did that and we actually, there's actually a video of it too it, we made it all out of garbage and arduinos and and just some like and some and some server motors so it, it's really cool because like i learned a lot through that experience i learned a lot through like in those short like literally three day events and then that that whole time at spain maybe like a month long just because i competed in like 10 of them um i got to learn about a lot about different industries and how they operate i got to learn how how to build hardware integrations to software integrations i learned how to work with telecommunication apis and learn about how uh phone call servers work it's just like a lot of random stuff you wouldn't learn unless you just worked at that worked at that industry so i got my you know fee exposed and my, my, i got i got i got exposed early on just like on all these different concepts and like again i just saw different patterns emerge and that definitely helps me understand how to code better so just to reiterate um going to tech meetups finding like community uh that you can that, that can push you further and then hackathons are the three things i recommend plus tutorials obviously but there, there's so many tutorials i don't want to name any so <laughs> <laughs> what I hear a lot of, and I'll, I'll kind of go into it for a moment, is the challenge of uh, social communities, these, these things like whether it's a, a virtual uh, community or, or uh, IRL, but these actual communities where you're getting challenged by uh, your peers to say, hey, oh, like, especially in a, a hackathon environment where you actually have a goal where you're trying to build something, you get tossed into a new industry where you have to um, immerse yourself uh, uh, kind of in, in the challenges of that industry and what the uh, pain points and the friction is for a user, mm -hmm. uh, dive into those different personas. Like, I think that's uh, it's so useful. I mean, there's obviously videos you could watch and mm -hmm. you could do that all day long, but when you go into these uh, challenges, um, and e even you could extend that to conferences in a way too, because it's, it's a lot of that social element mm -hmm. where you're, you're getting to talk to your peers, finding out what they're doing, and then um, learn s something new. You might say, you know what, I, I, need, I might need Salesforce to do this one thing, and I never did any kind of integration with Salesforce. All right, here we go. Roll up the sleeves. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a really great um, opportunity, and it's advantageous in uh, so many different ways. Oh, for sure, definitely. You get you get to actually have an excuse to use this specific framework or this specific language or specific tool that you've always wanted to use. And it's like, well, we have actually have an idea that we can actually use to actually build this product. And then you actually push yourself and try it out and actually learn the nuances of Salesforce, whether you like it or not. And then you can decide the next project, what do you want to use afterward? So it's definitely a good way to experiment and definitely work with different team members and learn how to communicate and learn how to present at the very end of the day. So it, it, it's in that short, you know, two, three time span or three day time span or even just one day time span, you get to get your feet wet on a lot of different topics across the board. And it teaches you kind of how the software development lifecycle works in a very, very short time sense. Not realistically, because sometimes people like when, when you're like, like when you're on a crunch and you got like one hour left and you have to build a product, which has happened to me before at Hackathon where we had to work on like a Google Flutter application. None of us know to use, none of us knew how to use Google Flutter and we had an hour to go <laughs> out. We just threw it on Figma and just made some slides and just mocked it up on a phone and actually actually made it look like an actual phone app and we got second place. So, <laughs> it <worked out. laughs> so. there you go. And that's, it's an interesting point that you, you just made there too. It's being able to, um, have a broad array of a skill of skills, you know, not just things that you might just be um, conventionally think of uh, when you when it comes to programming, like, oh, let me, you know, I, I need to know some, uh, you know, this much of vanilla JS, or I need to know this much of Vue or React, whatnot, but also, you know, Figma. Hey, who here knows Figma? Who could who could make a prototype? Like having having a little bit more in your uh, in your pockets to be able to um, leverage when when it comes time is uh, really critical, and it, and it helps you broaden what you uh, think is possible. Yeah, there's there's actually uh, I think there was a book that I was reading. I think it was from Cal Newport. It's it's called like So Good They Can't Ignore You, and I, I think the concept mm -hmm. is kind of similar to that where. Actually, I'm not sure if it's from that book per se, but the concept is um, it's really hard to be an expert at anything or be like the best at the best at something particular, but it's actually easy to become like an intermediate expert at like several different topics. 
Yeah. And the 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 union of like those three like intermediate expertise topics helps lead to a lot of uh, progression and different startups helps lead to a lot of new innovations and ideas. So by broadening your perspective, um, you could definitely expose yourself to a lot of great things and, and get something good out of it. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of value to both. I mean, I'm not saying one's the best and one's the other. Like, you know, we definitely need people that are generalists that could be able to step into an environment, like you said, like a startup and be able to put on, you know, a cowboy hat, a rain jacket and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, like you know, we need that person. And then we also need people that that person could say, hey, do you know X, Y, and Z specifically? Are you a specialist? Great, let's put you here. So there's no like path for anyone to be like, this is definitely the path, you know, follow the, the yellow bricks and blah, blah, blah. You know, not everybody needs a heart or a brain, et cetera. Some people just want the shoes. So, you know, there, there's, there's different ways that you could find your passion and find your place where you feel like you belong in, in, in the development community. So yeah, that's it's really interesting. Vincent, we're we're getting dangerously close to the end of the show, and I want to make sure we have time for uh, a few last questions. I know we had uh, just so much to talk about that it <laughs> planned on, but we we kind of ran out of time, which is great. With that, that keeps the conversation fresh, and I, I know everything's going on. Uh, first off, let's let's get this uh, covered. What's the best people best way people could find out more about you? Uh, first off, there you you have the website, which is what Vincent Vincent and Tang. And Tang. That's but what's my, what's? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, well, oh, yeah, I was just going to ask you, what's the N for? So the N actually doesn't stand for anything. Uh, actually, my middle what? name is my middle name isn't even N. It's actually L W. I actually have two middle names. L W. <laughs> It, it, actually, my full name is Vincent Lun Wei Tang. It's actually my Chinese name in the middle. But, oh, nice. But if you were to think about social media handles and like having an easy way for someone to reach out to you, and you have like you you, you can't have like the, a different handle on different different platform, right? Because then like right, yeah, like Vincent L W Tang here, and then you're Vincent Pokey Tang over here, and Vincent N Tang over here. So. I wanted to have something that was synonymous across everything. So I ran it through like a social name checker, which kind of like checks through like all the available domain names and available spaces that are, are for that social media tag. And that one wasn't taken and it just rolled off your tongue. And just, I could tell someone like, it's my first name, the middle initial, like Nancy or like N for Nancy and then Tang. Just like, it just became so much wow. easier to have a phone call conversation. Cause like I used to do like mm -hmm. sales for restaurant equipment, I have to like explain like, oh, you have to, if, if you do this, yeah. So you have to go and get this item. Here, let me spell it off for you. It's A for Alpha, T for Tango, C yeah. for Charlie. It's like at the end of the day, it's like it takes too long to explain. So like it helps out having something that's easy to memorize and easy to explain on a phone. So that's why I stuck with Vincent and Tang. And that's what I use for Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I love it. It's it's catchy. Dot, let me dot, put up dot, your, your... Dot com. Your oh, yeah. I, I just took a picture of just one of my friends. He's he's one of my good friends. He talked about bodybuilding all the time and just threw that up there. It was just a fun toast. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> a good picture. But uh, yeah, so at twitter.com slash Vincent N. And that doesn't stand for anything. Tang. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell people that. I'd say N as in it doesn't stand for nothing. I was actually going to have a nickname for myself. Uh, oh, in what's case the nickname? I, in case I ever get to the point where I'm in, like going to a bodybuilding competition, which I'm not there, obviously, but if I ever get to that point where I like it, like, if there's ever a time where I actually have to have a nickname for a competition like that, I'm going to call myself Vincent TNT Tang because <laughs> literally nice. T and then N and T. <laughs> so there, there was just a lot of, there was just a lot of like, it, it was just like destiny that that name just happened to be available and it just happened to be easy to memorize because Funny story is um, I'm actually part of like a Facebook group and it's for all the Vincent Tangs in the world. And it's just like mm -hmm. we have communication sometimes when we talk about struggles of having such a common name. And it's like, I'm so glad that that uh, that that this name was available. Oh, Javier asked me um, what's next what's for me. What's next? Yeah. For, yeah. So we just finished up like the, we're about, a, we're about we still haven't connected the podcast over to the, um, to to all the podcast platforms, but I'm getting that ready set up. We've already done like four or five episodes already. Um, 
so once once that gets finalized, uh, that that's gonna be like kind of where. I'm... <laughs> once I get that, once I once I get that set up, that's gonna be like kind of like what I'm be working on for the, the, like this month and maybe next month. I, I'm hoping just finishing it this month, and then after that, I'm probably working on like, uh, like I, I did a call for proposal for 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 Google DevFest, and I don't know if they got accepted. I don't think it did. So I don't have technically any any commitments, but I'm just going to be focusing on like bulking up and working on playing the guitar since I don't actually know how to play it that well. And I've been learning how to sing too at the same time, which nice. That, that I'm sorry, go ahead. Which I'm not terribly good at at good at as well. So so it's like well, that I've been brings from my perspective. Go. That brings me to my last point, which before I ask you the question, because I, I know you got to grab the guitar to sing us out in a moment. Oh, uh, God, I but, can't put me on the spot like this. <laughs> no, I no, can't. you're definitely on the spot. But before we get to that last <laughs> part, let, let me ask you, you know, we would love to ask if you could provide and if you would like to provide any advice uh, in our closing here for uh, people. Any, any, I want to provide you an opportunity to uh, provide any words of wisdom they might yeah. have. For sure. Uh, definitely broaden your perspective and definitely try out new things because for me, uh, since I kind of moved away from a whole different industry, I kind of didn't know where I wanted to go or at least like where I want to go when it came to development. Um, and I've been working in that same industry so long that I just wanted something fresh and something new. So uh, definitely broaden your perspective, try out new things, uh, reflect on what you learn with those new things and see what you do and don't like. And then that will definitely help you out, at least in terms of where you want to go in life. I love that. All right. So at, at the end here, Vincent, if you want to grab the guitar, sing and play us out, please. I literally can't play the guitar that well. I could try, though, if you really I want to. I tried over there. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, well, it's already on over there. I've only had like a couple lessons, though. So if it's oh, on. Let, 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 let's stop using like the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Fine. So Vincent, for our audio listeners, is uh, getting up, going over to grab his acoustic guitar, which I believe is a Yamaha. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which kind of a Yamaha it is yet, but he's coming back and sitting down, and I believe he's going to sing us out. Putting the guitar down. I hope it's uh, tuned. It is tuned because I just had my guitar lesson recently. So I can't actually play. I can play different chords and play different play different major keynotes, but I'm so Okay, like, so Stairway to Heaven by Vincent Tang. Oh, Vincent, God, take us off. I don't know the lyrics There's to There's a that. lady. Come on, go ahead. This is the first time I've actually had to perform in front of somebody. Now I'm Let's go. It's a lot of talking, a lot more playing. Wait. Wait, see, I'm still getting my transition. You're doing good. So I can just play different, different. <sighs> now you're putting me in the spot even further. I mean, no, I can... not, no, you said you were going to sing too. Go ahead. Okay. All waiting. I got a ton of people okay. asking to hear you sing. Okay. This is going to sound embarrassing, but, uh, so the, first, not go. the first song that I learned how to sing is just a song that I had to sing as a kid back in school. So it's, uh, my country tis of thee, which the reason why that song was picked in particular is so I can get my pitches down correctly so mm -hmm. what do you got three yeah okay i'll try and i've only had a few few lessons and i'm still kind of embarrassed to actually do it live in front of a bunch of random people i've never met except javier so <laughs> so okay here goes all right ma i need a i need a i need some water me 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 Unique New York. Okay, so I'll try it out. Yeah. Should I play the song in the background or no? It, yes, go for it. Okay. Sing well, and play. Oh, oh no, no. I, I thought you had that. No, it's acapella. Okay. Uh, yes, and, and Javier okay, is I'll, right. I'll, in I'll just, in I'll honor just, of Van Halen. I'll just. Oh, I don't. I don't know how to sing anything. <laughs> no, no. Just go ahead with your song. Okay. 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 So. This is a song that I learned just so I can get my pitches down. Um, so here it is. My, my country tis of the sweet land of liberty. 
of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. That's all. That's all I'm playing notes I know offhand because the rest of the song I just forget. I was just practicing that for literally three weeks straight, <laughs> or Dude, three or four, really four cool. days straight. So <laughs> you got the voice though. You got it. That's awesome. It, like literally my my teacher has been like playing the piano notes and then like asking me to match the pitch and because i didn't have my nasal surgery done then i couldn't feel the reverberations of my nose oh, yeah. so now that i have now that i have that done i can actually feel the vibrations in like my nasal line when i'm singing or when, when the notes are being played and i can actually match it now but i don't have any verbato where it's like you're like where it's like you're fluctuating the note where it sounds more interesting so it's still like flat but it's still like hit i'm still hitting the correct notes but yeah exactly yeah it sounds really good dude you're you're on your way you sound great okay. i mean how long have you been doing it for uh same time as my guitar i've been really doing it for like yeah. a month so yeah so yeah you're on the right track you're doing good a lot of people can't right even track. get to where you're at so you're i'm good. gonna start playing guitar and then i have a really good friend that goes to bars and plays so i might play with them and start singing <laughs> take that hackathon uh analogy and bring it to that you'll it's same thing just like everything else vincent we are at the end of the show i want to say thank you so much for spending your time with us uh it's, it's it's been great it's been super fun uh i'm still really sorry to hear about the bends but i'm glad you're doing a lot better i'm pretty much recovered from it so i'm moving on with that or moving past that at least yeah and and thanks for being our last guest of uh season five it's been uh gonna be five years in november and thanks everybody for watching thank you to our exclusive sponsor off zero this year really appreciate it and thanks everybody for watching uh thanks and uh we'll see you next time